It's always in style. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Um, amazing things are going on in the world, as you know, as uh, we look around and see what's going on in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, boy, I just, uh, we need to pray for Ukraine, but we also need to pray for Russia because a lot of the folks there are not really happy to be in this war as well. Uh, their leadership obviously is leading them in a certain direction, but when you talk to a lot of the people on the ground, um, the Russian people aren't necessarily really behind this war. So let's hope for a quick resolution that things get uh, straightened out there and, and we end up with, uh, you know, things going in a good direction, especially after the pandemic and all the craziness with uh, oil prices. Uh, boy, it really makes me glad that I have a Tesla and I've got uh, my son-in-law who's going to join us today as well. Uh, put in a 220 hookup for me so I can charge at home. And uh, I don't worry about energy prices nearly as much as I used to. Anyway, we're glad you're with us today. And we've got a special couple of guests. Uh, we're going to be talking about gut salt racing. It's going to be a good session this morning. Uh, this uh, Actually, we're in the evening for you guys. But uh, we're, we're going to talk about gut salt and a whole lot of really interesting things taking place because not very often do you get to bring in to the studio world record holders. But today we are having world record holder today. And we're going to hear from Frank Sylvester, Frank Silva Jr., who is the owner driver of uh, Got Salt Lakester. And uh, amazing. So, uh, Frank, glad to have you with us. Uh, glad to be here. Thank yeah. You. And you, you've got a lot of history we're going to talk about, but uh, we'll get into the racing part. We want to talk about a bunch of other things. And your crew chief is my son in law, Brandon Carter. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Brandon, welcome. Nice to have you with us. Good to be here. Yeah. You know, uh, it's interesting. I wanted to talk to you guys just a little bit about your history. Uh, Frank, you're a, a, and it's Frankie when I call you Frankie, but you know, you can call me whatever you want, Larry. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but uh, you're a firefighter here in town. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, what's going on with that. Uh, I've just been with Fresno City since 2005. My wife and I just barely uh, married. Uh, my wife, Jessica, and I um, were used to live in Southern California. So uh, Fresno called us up in 2005 and started going through the process of uh, the physical agility, background investigations, and stuff. And then we just got, hired on. So we've been here ever since, uh, started a family here, raised a family and just, we, we really fell in love with the Valley. Fresno has been really good to us. Um, you know, Southern California was great. We have a lot of family down there. It was tough to leave, but at the same time, it felt very refreshing to get up here and just kind of start new and yeah. start, you know, and you kind of got a, a mountain lifestyle right now. Yeah. Yeah. We live up in the foothills. And yeah. so it's a nice little commute down in the mornings and in the uh, mornings going home as well. And so, yeah, it's, uh, the, the, like you said, Fresno and the Valley and fire department has been really good to us. Yeah, that's great. Well, um, I have a, um, an uncle, um, who was a firefighter. I have an uncle who was a policeman. I have another cousin who was a firefighter. Uh, is there really a rivalry between the police and fire? <laughs> you know, the one thing we all have in common is they all want to be firefighters. <laughs> you ask any any cop, I should have been a firefighter. Should have been a firefighter. One of, one of my closest friends uh, <laughs> up the hill is CHP, and he always jokes around with stuff like that, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think you're called where you're called. Um, yep. We have the utmost respect for our, our law enforcement here, and I, I truly believe Fresno Fire Department's one of the best uh, in California. And I believe the same with, uh, Fresno PD. PD? Yeah. I yeah. mean, uh, we, we work hand in hand alongside with them a lot. Well, and, and I know when I was County superintendent of schools and right. in the school system, uh, wow, great partnership with fire department and with the police and, you know, inspections, making sure our schools are safe, you know, and fire and, yeah. and things like that. It was a great relationship, really good. So really appreciate all that you do. Um, uh, Brandon, uh, ACI. Tell me about ACI. What's ACI? I know you got a couple of names for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, ACI. That's my business. I'm a general contractor, uh, advanced construction innovations, and I just do uh, remodeling and uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Well, and another thing you do is you do uh, add-ons to my Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah. You know, it's Wait. nice nice having a son-in-law who is really handy with his hands, multi-talented, and very very quick to come up with solutions to things yeah. uh now in in uh, we're going to talk about racing here in a second but uh you're married to my daughter and uh, yep. <laughs> caitlin is a uh, special ed teacher administrator yes. at a charter school and uh doing some really good things and i've got four grandkids with you guys and 
And uh, they just got back from a unique trip down to Catalina Island. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They went down there for a few days and uh, got to do a whole bunch of fun things, uh, yeah. snorkeling and kayaking and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, in some freezing cold water. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, uh, there's nothing like going down in March. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, uh, we're here to talk about, uh, you know, the racing Got Salt Lakester. Um, now your father, how, how did the whole thing get started for you getting into racing to begin with? So my, my dad's been, uh, we're just a motorhead family. Uh, my dad's always been, he's loved motorcycles, race cars. And so in early 2000, we got our, we, we had our first car that we took to the Bonneville salt flats. Um, and then he's a, he's always had a longtime partner in the car, John Springer, who mm. after my dad passed away, John became my partner in the car. And so, uh, after dad passed, we, um, we just decided we wanted to go ahead and keep going with the car. So, um, we had, we also had a third partner in the car, Ross Ireland. Um, he kind of bowed out in mm. 2017, but John and I, and, and Brandon decided, Hey, we want to, we want to see if we can get this thing back out there. So, um, yeah, our, our we just, uh, we ended up kind of rallying the thing together and, and bought back the, uh, engine and kind of rebuilt it um to the best that we could you know we had yeah. help with steve peterson who's our always been our engine guy but me brandon and, and steve and john put that thing together and wow um so, so so you don't have millions of dollars like some of these no. racing companies <laughs> no. have behind you but yeah. you could sure l use some yeah. help so anybody yeah. out there you who's listening we did we we, yeah. we had it we had a lot of support when i uh was um trying to get the car back together um, I, I, I wrote some letters and I sent some letters to, uh, like Lucas oil company or, Mo, you know, or L Lucas oil products, yeah. um, bill at secure at new, uh, Brandon's companies on a uh, sponsor in a car, my little sister's company and, and her husband cruising tees is on the car. So, I mean, I, I just, I got so much support back. Great. Um, and they, you know, people just saying like, Hey, let us know whatever you need. We'd love to help yeah. out. So that's been exciting. Well, and, and your dad, uh, was the driver. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that first. Was that uh, 2011? 2011. Yeah. Was, yeah. So he drove it for six years. The This car that we have now, he drove uh, all the way up to, to 2011. Um, he got sick around 20, uh, 2000 and I want to say maybe nine. Okay. And, no. So it was, must have been earlier than that. It must have been more like six. Anyways. Um, he had this pre-leukemia blood disease mm. that he kind of fought for a while. So every time we went to Bonneville, we would come home and it was like, darn it, we didn't get that record. And yeah. so in my mind, we, you know, we only race one time a year. Um, and so I thought like, man, I don't know we're we, we're not going to get that record. Like is dad going to be strong enough to come back next year and drive? Sure. And so sure. God's grace every year showed back up, kept going. It took us a good, you know, four years of, uh, trying really hard uh, trying different motor combinations and, and closing the back of the car. And, uh, man, the stars just aligned just right in 2011. Um, dad went out and, and we, we heard that we, you could hear Brandon in the one video and he just goes 327. I mean, we just broke the record. I mean, we were just so <laughs> just flabbergasted. And that, folks, uh, that's 327 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So it was, it was definite, it was the most gratifying moment for our team. And this is, it's, you know, we don't have like a team like you see on NHRA. We have friends, we yeah. have family. <laughs> and so we have a lot of people that are invested in it, you know, all year long to get the car ready. Yeah. And then you go out there and you try and you have fun. But if you don't come home with the record, you kind of like, ah, oh, darn it, you know, <laughs> and then you got to wait the year to go back. So when he did it in 2011, it was it was just something special for our whole Now, team. tell me a little bit about when you're setting a record, you have certain things you have to do, like you have to run it twice or what? what's the how do you actually get to the record? So the, the very first run that you when if you have an existing record like we had for 2020, the existing record was 344 miles an hour. Um, if you go down and you make your first pass, yeah. you, if you qualify over that speed, your car goes to what's called impound. You have four hours to get it ready for the next run, and then you do the next run the following morning. But you have to yeah. make two So make sure it qualifies runs. on, you know, power <laughs> settings and whatever it, yeah. other kinds of things that yep. they require. Yep, yep. And yeah. so, but it, it's basically set up to where you can't just put your motor on kill 
and then go out there and run 375 and blow it up and then get the record. You have to have do it twice. So you have wow. to have something that's salvageable and running and yeah. working yeah. twice. And back in the day, you used to have to turn it around within an hour. Wow. But there's so many, um, you know, vehicles and entries, they can't do that anymore. So now they save it for the next day. Gotcha. And the technology that goes into an engine now. It's, it, yeah, is, it's insane. Ours is still relatively um traditional right um but we i mean we have a computer system that monitors stuff and brandon's our head guy on on well brandon's my he he takes care of everything but he's <laughs> he is uh he's definitely our computer guy and it, he he was the one that when you know, we get back in he'll download all the data and yeah look at everything and it shows them all kinds of different stuff but yeah there's i mean there's so much stuff above and beyond what our car runs um but yeah, ours is still a little, a little traditional, which I think is fun. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So you, you don't just take a car out there and say, hey, I want to race. <laughs> how, how do you actually get into the salt flat races, you know, at Bonneville? So there's um, an application process yeah, or something? Yeah, yeah, there's, there's rules and there's, um, you know, uh, there's a ton of different classes. So that's kind of the fun thing. Like there's, you could probably take the Tesla out there. You might have to put a roll cage <laughs> in it, you know. Right. Um, but they have, you know, electron or, you know, uh, electric cars. They have gas. They have fuel, which is a mix of alcohol and nitro. Um, they've even had a hydrogen powered car, okay. um, diesel. So they not only have that, but they have body, different bodies. So they have enclosed, they have open motorcycles, same things, fairings, um, you know, they just have wow. all kinds of different classes. And then within those, you, you have a, a set of rules that you have to line right. up with before right. you can go out and run. And, and you're monitored pretty closely. Sure. Yeah. 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 Well, Brendan, I know yeah. you made a video, um, inside the car. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. And folks, uh, if you want to see some of this, you can go to Facebook and uh, Got Salt Racing. Just, yeah, go to Google it. If you Google yeah. Got Salt Racing, pull up YouTube, or not not even YouTube, but just to, you'll go to videos. Okay. The first two or three videos are, are incredible. And yeah, uh, yeah, I'll let Brandon take that. Cause yeah. I, I, will bra I will brag on him. We have the best videos on as far as our sport goes, land speed <laughs> <Yep>. racing, <laughs> we've got the greatest videos. All thanks to Brandon. He's I love started. it. Yeah. So great tell job. us a little bit. How did how did you set that up? Uh, well, we have a bunch of GoPro cameras, and, right? And uh, we kind of slap those in different places along the car, and and uh, yeah, get different trailers. Angles. Tops of yeah. trailers. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's a short-lived idea. We lost a camera one time. Did you? <laughs> Another story for another okay. time. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we uh, uh, put cameras inside the the canopy facing at the driver, and, and uh, we use it for uh, the video, um, uh, but we also use it for data because it shows us uh, oh, what yeah. exactly the driver does at certain speeds, speeds. or yeah. uh, at certain moments when they push the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have a lot yeah. of stories, yeah, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, kind of started out at doing the video, uh, started out as like a fun thing. Sure. Uh, somebody brought a GoPro and we slapped it on the car and we're like, that's ah, really cool. But then we noticed we saw a whole bunch of things through right. the, through the video that was like, oh, wow, the car's doing this or the, you know, so, <laughs> so yeah. that's when we started putting them everywhere. Uh, well, I assume, so. uh, you do a lot of praying when you're driving a vehicle that goes <laughs> yeah. 300 and. 27 to 300 and what 60 some 363 was our top was speed. your top speed yeah wow you know i know the g-forces i feel in my tesla <laughs> just because of, you know the torque uh, you know from electric vehicle uh and i've seen some of the videos so i see the faces you know yeah. and, uh, it is fascinating what your body goes through as you're going through that racing mm. uh tell us a little bit of what what was it like when you you know did that you know, I actually drove the car. You know, and we had the news news guy out. He goes, for any of us that's gone over 85 miles an hour, what's it like? And I go, <laughs> I go, buddy, I had my eyes shut through all of it. So <laughs> I don't know. No, um, you know, so this is my first year. My first year driving the car under power was, uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. For the the Facebook the fan, friends, uh, take a look. Uh, we've got a little video going, but make sure you check that out because – it's not just a smooth ride. You know? No, the yeah. car the car has zero suspension, so it's all dependent upon how well the salt is. The salt is a natural phenomenon, so every year it's a little different. bit different. Sometimes mm -hmm. 
we were blessed with our 20, you know, 2000, 2020 and 21, it was like concrete, right? Incredible, hard, fast, smooth. But years prior to that, there were a lot of bumpy rides for Ross when he was driving. Wow. Um, and even towards the tail end of when my dad was driving, he just, you know, you have tracks that, that are bumpier than, you know, certain years. But, sure. Um, yeah, as far as the, the G-forces, it's definite. I would imagine it's nothing comparable to like a drag race. You still get that feeling being pressed in the seat. The cool thing is I'm pressed in the seat for five miles. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, you... So the track is actually five miles long. Is that what they're measuring? Correct. For your speed? Yeah, yeah. so from the, from the two and a quarter... Uh, and then every mile after that, it's an average of going into the mile and coming out of the gotcha. mile. So it's not gotcha. like a not like a radar gun. It's not right. like a top speed. It's an average between the okay. two. Okay, yeah. which really gives you a better sense of what the car can do. Yeah. For sure. You know, and yep. you don't blow up the engine just to get to that max. Yeah. You know? Well, the interesting thing is that he said a moment ago that the top speed for our car is 363, and that's what's on the timing slip. Yeah. Uh, and that's the average between the the mile the entry and the exit of the mile so wow in in reality he actually went much faster than 363 miles an hour uh, <laughs> on I, our dad i kind of have I, a hard I time getting my head around says. that yeah you know? <laughs> yeah so. wow wow well um you guys also and you mentioned the salt um it's salt flats mm -hmm. but it's not completely flat uh, I mean, you got bumps and oh, yeah. areas in there yeah, that they, yeah, the salt crust is over the unfortunately the salt crust has kind of been deteriorating over the last you know fifty years or mm. probably more. Um, back when you know my dad was going when he was you know uh, in his twenties and early thirties, the wow. salt the salt crust was really really thick. It was you know probably eight inches to a foot thick in some areas, and now we're dealing with like you know, an inch if we're lucky. Wow. Of good hard salt there. crust. And then underneath that is this kind of nasty mud. So um they the the the, the Save the Salt Foundation, SCTA, um, they've worked really, really hard to preserve it as much as they can and try to get there's a company that does um uh, like they make pot ash and stuff. So they're trying to put right. stuff back onto the salt flats. Okay. And so um, we're trying to do what we can do to keep it going. But yeah, yeah. track prep is huge. We're going to catch, catch that and go a little further with that. But uh, Israel and the Dead Sea mm -hmm. has the highest and the most uh, potash uh, deposits in the world. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, and Maybe obviously. if Intrepid will move out there. <laughs> yeah, really. We could try that. <laughs> hey, folks, we're going to take a quick break here. How quick the time flies. Uh, we're just glad that you've joined us today. You're going to hear more about Got Salt Lakester and World Records. We're with Frank Silva Jr. and Brandon Carter. We'll be right back. You're listening to Powell to the People. Write it down. Hey, Facebook friends, we're so glad you've joined us today. Uh, really check out uh, the videos because uh, they are some amazing videos you You'll, you'll feel like you're in the car you know, and you get a sense of what it's like out there racing. And uh, and the, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the salt flats when it was mucky. I mean, there was no flat in it. Uh, it was watery. Anyway, we'll talk about that. All right, we're going to head back. People on the best talk in town. Hey, welcome back to Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. And, you know, we talk politics, education, religion, technology, sports, and we're talking sports today, values and healthy communities. You know, if uh, if it's something interesting, we're going to be talking about it here at Powell to the People. I want to remind you at KXEX 1550 AM, share with your friends Saturdays at 4, Sundays at 6, and you get a chance to hear some really interesting people. We've got a couple of guests with us today. Also, Good News with Larry Powell is uh, nothing but good news stories. You can hear that Monday through Friday at 10 and at 4. You can also catch us on Spotify, Facebook, YouTube, you name it, we've got it. There's a place for you to hear it when you want to hear it. So streaming is really a good thing. Hey, tell us a, a little more about, uh, I know one time you guys went out and the, the salt was not firm at all. Uh, what what happens to it with that? Well, we we race in a uh, um, dry lake bed. Okay. Uh, is what it's considered. But uh, the, the Great Salt Lake, uh, but every season uh, during the summer, uh, it dries up to the point where 
uh, the water recedes and, and we can actually so you get, get that firm. Yeah. That's where you yeah. get the firm, like packed down salt. Yeah. And, um, uh, but sometimes it rains a little bit later into the season than, than, uh, you know, than usual. And so when you go out there, you're, you're actually driving through a lake yeah. to get to the racetrack. Uh, um, and I think in 2015, that's what we were dealing with. It was, that sounds about right. Very, yeah. very wet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very wet. But, and it, and it creates quite a different, uh, surface sure. as well. Um, <clears throat> there's an ideal surface for the, for the cars to race on. Uh, it's usually, you know, after it's rained a little bit, but then when it's dried out and packed down, uh, really well is, is kind of the, the best surface, uh, yeah. So if there's water around, it's usually kind of a slushy uh, surface. It's it's a little harder to gain traction. Yeah, yeah. you get a lot of uh, <laughs> potholes, uh, potholes and stuff, and so um, it can't and become. You think we complain about potholes? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you're going 300 plus. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. But you know, you usually just fly right over those 300 plus. <laughs> I don't think your wheels hit the ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's amazing. Uh, and what city is it near where you guys? Uh, you stay where? <clears throat> We we stay in Wendover. Wendover, yeah. okay, yeah. It's yeah. a it's a state line border town that's just on the on the edge uh, or on the the border state line rather of Nevada. Nevada, and so we you you stay in Wendover, Nevada, and then you drive across the state line and go into Utah, and then the gotcha dry lakes right there, about yeah. eight five five eight miles something like that. So your dad set the record. Or, and and what was the classification at the time he set the record? So at the, at the same at the time he set the record, so it's the same motor. It's a double A blown. He was blown gas at the time. Okay. So we had a, ours is a uh, an Arius. It's a 540 inch Arius. It's a Hemi. Okay. Um, and dad was running on a race gas at the time. So I think the record then was 315. He ended up going 327 and 322, and I think it averaged out to a 324 record. And then after he broke the record on gas, the guy that owned the engine, Ross, uh, he goes, we're done with gas. Gas is tremendously hard to tune. Uh-huh. Your your window of, of tuning is, is about this big really on narrow, gas. Huh? Yeah. We're on fuel and, and alcohol, <laughs> or methanol rather. Uh, you've got a much larger window, and so he Ross goes, "Hey, we're done with this gas stuff. Let's let's be done with that." So we went to alcohol. So it's methyl. called blown fuel. Blown fuel now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, and that's what Ross was forever trying. You know, we spent another six years trying to get him to break the record, but again, the the salt just changes. That's the one thing that's tremendously different. We were talking about the conditions of the lake bed. When you look at a drag, like a chop fuel dragster. They got tires that are this wide. Yeah. They prep the track. We're looking at two feet wide. The (laughs) surface is sticky, you know, when Uh, you go on a drag strip. Yeah. Our course is forever changing. So it could be one thing at the starting line. And at mile three, you have a crosswind Mm -hmm. and it's and it's and it's sloppy here and not sloppy there. And then at the five mile, it's something different. Mm -hmm. And our and our tires are really, I mean, they're only about eight inches wide and they're they're smooth. So yeah, because when we see the the drag drag races on television, yeah, uh, those are big tires in the back. Oh, they mm-hmm. burn them, you know, oh, boom, 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 and yep. yeah. yeah. So it's a whole different style, completely different. Poor Ross, yeah. when he, from for the six years that he was behind the wheel, he just had just the that slushy track and just yeah. not very good traction. He mm-hmm. still went three thirty, I think, but our competition uh, had that record bumped up to like three thirty seven. And so we just missed. I mean, he still drove the heck out of the car considering the track. And wow. you really see the proof in some of our old videos. Videos, yeah. Brandon's got videos of Ross driving. And when you see him in the car and then you look at that next to me in the car, yeah. I, you know, I could drive that thing with one hand. Poor Ross is in there. He looks like he's in an, <laughs> he's off, hanging on. He looks like he's in yeah. an off-road truck. And it's like, oh. <laughs> What about wow. the one with me in the car? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a really good one, too. I yeah. did see that video, too. Yeah. You know, um, it, then along comes uh, time for you to start driving. Uh, I know I go down to DMV to get a license. <laughs> How do you get a license to drive one of these things? That's a great question. So uh, out at the Salt Flats, they have you do a series of controlled passes and controlled distances. So okay. um, I, there's a very specific uh, ride up on, you know, I think 150, 175, 200, 225, 250, and so on. Once you go 300, that is your double A license. You can go then as fast as you want to go. So um, when I first got there, 
our car is so big and so long and it's it's actually hard to get it to go 150 believe it or not wow. so you're really having to kind of <laughs> back really off slow it, it down so they kind of yeah. give us the okay to go ahead and go 175 so you have a little okay window there but then they you know though hey we want you to go to the two mile right we want you to go to the two and a half now we want you to go to three and so um our car is really capable of going 300 miles an hour by the three mile wow and so the first time we went to the four mile and we have no speedometer so all we have is a tack and we have we have a calculation so we know like hey we need to go 7300 rpm right in third gear right in order mm-hmm. to achieve our speed well the first time i went to the four mile uh which this was day three four yes. four I think it was three. Day, day four or something like that. Um, the first time we're going to the four mile, we're actually going to drive it through the four yeah. to the five. Yeah. I got my double A license and I'm just sitting there trucking along. I look down and I go, man, that's 7,300 RPMs. And so I start continuing through, go through the five. We're at 75 or 600 RPM. And, and I pull off and the safety guy comes up and he goes, hey, that was a pretty good run. I go, how fast? And he goes, oh, I think 350 something. I mean, I shot out of that car. <laughs> and these guys, they're they're driving my dually. And yep. they're there because, uh, you know, at Bonneville, they, they'll push you off first about yeah. 30, 40 miles an hour. But anyways, they're trying to play catch up. They're going 90 in the truck, yeah. <laughs> slamming on the horn. And they're just yeah. flipping out because we've not, you know, it was just wow. another yeah. unbelievable time for our team. That's- when you're out there, they, they have a... Uh, like a, a radio system set up to where you can hear the the speeds as they're okay as they're happening yeah uh, they call them out over the radio so, so probably in cheering the truck, going on in and, the truck yeah. we're all erupting going crazy <laughs> and and yeah. he's you know at the end of the run going hey how fast <laughs> it's still i gotta so. say it's still one of my favorite videos uh I, I, we got our great music video that brandon made we've got our great side by side the tail and the yeah. driver cam video mm-hmm. they're unbelievable videos Still my favorite video is about a 90 second video of just Brandon holding his camera inside the truck, push, you know, pushes the car, the car goes away and then the car turn, you know, it just disappears. Yeah. And then you hear the guy on the radio mm-hmm. and then what it gives me goosebumps. So as I sit there and listen to my guys, my yeah. team in the truck and the, the, the excitement they have and the cheering that they have when they hear those speeds come over the, yeah. the speaker it's still my favorite video <laughs> yeah, to listen to well you know there are a lot of lessons in racing because um uh, it's not just the driver no you've got a team around you that makes this thing work you know yeah. and there's a lesson in life for all of us that you know we're not very good on our own oh. but you put a whole bunch of people around us and then for those of us who know the lord and love him uh it's an amazing thing uh, that you're able to accomplish some of the things we accomplish, but you've got good people around you that, that help make that happen. Yeah. You know, um, now take us through um, what happened when you actually set your record and you got a hat on and you got a shirt on and it says 300 mile club Bonneville uh, life member, yeah. 200 mile club. Yeah. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. You know, what was it like when you actually set the record in that, that was the 354? 57 351 and 355 yeah. yeah yeah so we um first of all when we left here in 2020 we did not have any intention of trying to go after a, it was the existing record is 344 miles an hour wow. the fastest our car had been was probably about 330 335 yeah and so when brandon and i went out there uh you know i had uh, something that i wanted to do with my dad a lot of times you know, out of the salt flats, people scatter their ashes. They'll pack their sure. to pair. Because your father had passed away. Yeah. 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 So I'd been waiting seven years just to drive the car, finally get <laughs> some seat time. And so, yeah, it was just a, it was a fairy tale year. I mean, um, they've had cars that are going, you know, 500 miles an hour out there. And we've had people come up to us and go, man, that was cool watching that car go almost 500 miles an hour. They go, but your story, you're watching what you guys did this, yeah. this week. Yeah. was the coolest thing i've seen wow. and it was, so that was really cool but back to the team issue uh that you're saying yeah it, it i mean it takes a team for sure um <laughs> you were talking about you know that uh, what what's it like there's probably a lot of praying i had another buddy that goes he goes hey man you need to make a t-shirt that says there are no atheists <laughs> When you go, when you, when you drive 350 miles an hour, I go, buddy, you're right. Uh, Racers for Christ is a big organization yeah. that goes out there. And so it was really kind of special. Um, 
I had uh, I had my whole team where there we are on the starting line. The racers for Grice guy comes up and he goes, "Hey," he says, uh, "You you guys want to you guys want to pray real quick?" And I go, "Absolutely." Yeah. You know, Brandon and I have been going to church, you know, together for a long time and small groups and stuff. And so it's like, yeah. What was really neat is that the, some of the other guys on the crew were yeah. they were right there. Yeah, you know. So here it. we are standing on the starting line. There's about <laughs> eight or eight or ten of us in a circle yeah. praying, and I'm like. This is pretty rad. Yeah. Well, you know, the Bible verse that says, you know, you run the race to win, yeah. you know, and uh, and you never know for sure how you're going to do. But boy, all that preparation that goes into it. We want to talk a little more about that. Uh, amazing how quick our time goes, folks. <laughs> We're going to take another quick break and we'll be right back to Powell to the people where civility is always in style. We're having a great time. You're listening to Powell to the People. Write it down. Uh, Where are we, um, Jose, on time? Third? We're on the third segment. The fourth, I'll make it shorter. Okay, got it. Or if you want to just do another big one. Let's just keep going. Okay. That'll be good. Thanks. Okay. We'll do a 19-minute segment here. All right. People on the best talk in town. Hey, welcome back to our last segment. Today, we're with Frank Silva Jr. and Brandon Carter of Gut Salt Racing. I mean, some uh, amazing things. You know, it's fun to sit with a, a world record holder and a team that has accomplished something like that. That's uh, that's kind of a, a dream kind of thing, like when you first started going into racing and your dad and stuff, did you did you have an idea that, you know, you'd be a world record holder? No, no, <laughs> uh, def- I, I don't think so. I mean, like I said, Brandon and I were just we we wanted to just get the car back out there. It had about a two and a half years just lull where it just sat in my right. shop, no motor. And so Brandon had kept communication with Ross better than I had. And he called him. And one day I was at the store and Brandon goes, hey, you know, Ross still has the motor. So long story short. Our goal as just buddies were just, yeah. man, let's get the car back out there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's scatter your dad's ashes. You know, let's get the team back out. <laughs> you know, and our partner in the car, John, was, you know, he's on board. So, um, yeah, I, that was it. We just wanted to go get the car back out, finally get yeah. some seat time for me and John to, to drive. And so... Um, that was it. That was our that was our main goal. Well, we want to hear more about the actual re- record run mm-hmm. and things. But Brandon, I want to give a shout out to public education and uh, shop class. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you went to your high school. You went through uh, you know classes that gave you an opportunity to yeah. to really get into what's going on with a, an engine, with the motors, with yeah. with all of that stuff. That you know so. You don't just become a crew chief, boom, you're a crew chief. <laughs> There's a lot of preparation that goes into that. Tell us a little bit about that. And then you also were in the Navy, so yeah. tell us a little about what you did when you were there. Uh, well, uh, I went to Yosemite High School. and, and uh, Right up here in our I mountains. Had, I had uh, the privilege of, of getting into uh, the auto shop class uh, when I was, you know, early on. And, and uh, just kind of, it just came in kind of came naturally to me uh the first year that we were the that i was in uh auto shop was like the the first year where you learn how to like change spark plugs and and right. change a flat tire and that sort of thing <laughs> and i walked up to my uh, auto shop teacher and i was like you know my dad needs a new motor in his truck uh-huh. um can i rebuild it mm-hmm. like after school or something he goes if you rebuild that motor um you can do it in class and if you rebuild it, I'll give you an A for the year. Wow. <laughs> I got an now, A. Now, there's some incentive. <laughs> I, I got an A that year. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. good. But uh, uh, it was just something that I fell in love with. And, and <clears throat> oh, there's yeah. a picture in the Navy. Uh, auto shop. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, uh, yeah, after I got out of high school, uh, went uh, went into the military, went into the Navy. I was uh, an aviation ordnance man, uh, worked on F-14 Tomcats. And I wow. Was, and those, uh, are, those are quick. Yeah. Uh, they're fast. They're yeah. a little, a little fast. <laughs> so you, you've been into speed yeah. for a long time. A little bit. Yeah. T- <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Worked on, uh, 
you know, aircraft carriers. It was on the Lincoln and the Vinson and, yeah. and, uh, worked on the flight deck. And you served uh, some time where? Uh, Persian Gulf. Persian had, Gulf. Yeah. He had a yeah. three, three, uh, Westpac deployments out in the Persian Gulf and, wow. and, uh, well, thanks uh, for your service yeah. there. I mean, it's amazing. My pleasure. Yeah. My pleasure. So what, what, uh, did you do with the planes? What was, uh, um, I was, uh, well, aviation ordinance is the, uh, the title or the yeah. job that I did. Um, I loaded and maintained all the weapon systems, wow. uh, on the aircraft and, uh, before and after launch, or we would, we would have to arm and disarm the planes. Yeah. So <clears throat> just before they would shoot off the catapult, I would have to be out there. <clears throat> wow. Wow. Well, uh, did you have any idea when you were in high school that you'd be a crew chief for a world record setting? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> team? no, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was something that, uh, you know, just, uh, it kind of started, uh, we were in a small group together, Frankie and I, and, and, uh, we're doing and some folks, a small or, group is a group of Christians that get together and just talk about issues and learn about the Lord and yeah. read the Bible together. And, uh, it's really good. So that's what you were doing. Yeah. Yeah. And we had a, uh, icebreaker game. I think it was two truths and a lie or something. <laughs> and he said something about, I've been 200 miles an hour in a, in a car a race car or something like that. And, uh, my ears perked up and I was uh. like, I want to. I want to get to know that guy. Yeah. It was this is the very first time I'd ever it, met him. It was love at first time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Romance so, takes place. So, <laughs> so everything disappeared in the room, and I was like, "Tell me more about that." Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's good. And then, uh, then he uh, he dragged me out to the salt, and um, the rest was I got uh, holy cow. I got salt fever, as they yeah. call it, from there. And, yeah. And uh, wow, been doing it ever since. Well, I know when uh, when we came on today for the show. Uh, Formula One was on and, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you and I, the two of you and I were, were talking and all of a sudden I was not in the conversation <laughs> yeah. anymore. You know, Formula One was going and you guys were just, I mean, clicking on what's taking place. You're talking about the cars, you're talking about the drivers. Yeah. So you're fully into this whole idea of, of racing and of doing the very best you possibly can do, but at the same time doing it uh, with the friendship that develops and all of the things around it mm -hmm. that are not just the car, but everything that happens with the car. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, well, something that's kind of unique to, to our sport, to land speed racing is um, it's a community that um, there's no, um, it's not like a, a, a higher end uh, racing type of racing, like formula one or an HRA yeah. where everything's a secret and you kind of <laughs> have to, you know, uh, be careful about what you expect. Yeah. No, yeah. everybody, everybody, uh, is, uh, together. If you have something that breaks on your motor, you can go to the guy in the next pit and say, Hey, you got one of these yeah. parts wow. and they will, they will give it to you. So it's uh, a team. Yeah. And a team. Yeah. yeah. You know. And yeah. you know, people come out to our pits all the time and, yeah. and, uh, especially when kids walk into our pits, you know, we were quick to go, Hey, you want to sit in the car? And they kind of go, what, <laughs> you know? And, <laughs> and so we pop the canopy open. Yeah. We kind of have that ritual every time. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's something where, where we want everybody to experience as much as they can that we experience while yep. we're out there. So it's, it's a really, uh, really close community. Well, that's, uh, that's neat. I've had there. the pleasure of seeing the car up close at both at your house and Frankie in your mm -hmm. workshop, you know, yeah. up in the mountains there. Uh, it is low, it is long, yeah. and you got no idea that, the, and you had mentioned earlier that it seems like a, a little remote control car when you're looking at it on the pictures. <laughs> when you but, see yeah. some pictures, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. when you're standing next to it, that's one long deal. And yeah. to think about that thing doing the speeds that it does, um, you know, how do you keep the, the force of it down so you're not, you know, like an airplane flying because you're going fast. I mean, prayer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On a wing and a prayer. Yeah, huh? yeah. It's got, yeah. it's got a lot of weight. Um, and it's actually been in a wind tunnel. So there's weight specifically located in the car to where, um, it's always wanting to face forward, just like a dart. If you take gotcha. a dart and turn a dart around and throw it, it yeah. always spins around. It spins and wants around to go. and goes. Our car is weighted to where it always wants to go forward. Um, you'll forever have traction issues. So that's right. just up to the driver and the surface. 
Um, but I mean, the car weighs close to 5,000 pounds. So it's wow. mm-hmm. completely different than like a top fuel dragster. It's built to be very heavy and very yeah. specific for land speed. So it, it doesn't do what we've seen with some cars where they get airlifted and you know, I don't want to say it doesn't, but <laughs> but you've designed yeah. it so not far, to. It's, so far, it's it's, it's planted, less like planted. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. So engineering. Uh, tell me a little more about the actual time you set the record. So uh, you went out there, and this twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty was our twenty twenty was yeah. your year. Mm-hmm. Okay, and. We're, COVID had been going on. Yeah, so it was uh, it was actually kind of a blessing that SCTA was able to get an actual organized event because we thought we might not have one. Right. Um, and so they were able to get enough strings pulled and get the permits wow. pulled and everything mm-hmm. to hold the event. There was still only half of the entries because a lot of folks come from overseas, come yep. from out of state. They have travel restrictions. So we really had a, a nice fairly quiet course or i should say and you know normally they have four courses out there bonneville um so yeah it was uh it was just a phenomenal year we went out there like i said with the intention of just getting some seat time and and just finally getting the car back out and uh it just so if folks remember incredible. march covid started yeah and then you guys are there in august mm-hmm. and that's when you're so it was pretty remarkable to be able to get that going because we were going through an isolation time. Everybody was told, don't do this, don't do that. Yeah. yeah. And you were able to pull it off. And the unique thing is, uh, because it's a, a speed record, it doesn't matter how much competition you have because you're competing against a time. Correct. Mm-hmm. You're not competing against. So if you've got one guy racing or 20, yeah, you're going against the time. And that's a standard that is really hard to, to achieve. So uh, tell me about the first run that you had. <laughs> Yeah, can tell, we go, can tell we go us straight, about the first run. Can we go straight to the second run? <laughs> um, so, I, you know, I'm I'm here. I am a new driver. Um, I, I, there was a whole claustrophobia issue that happened inside the car about two months before we were getting ready to leave. It was the first time I sat in the car with a helmet, a driver's suit. It was my dad's driver's suit. Oh. And Brandon's now going to be the guy to belt me in. And so we have a lot of safety features in there to keep you in place. Sure. Well, it's the first time I've been in the car with all that stuff and I did not feel good uh, at oh. all. So I shot out of the car and Brandon and Bill are looking at me like, what are you doing? <laughs> Get back in the car. I got to belt you in. And I'm like, I don't feel comfortable in there. Wow. So long story short, I had to start over like a child and basically start sitting in there with just my helmet, no suit, no yeah. belts mm-hmm. on, on almost so the step daily. by step. Yeah. It was yeah. actually, it was kind of a, a, you know, it, it made me emotional because here I am, I got my closest friend and he's spending not only days, but nights working on this car to prep oh. it, to get right time away from his family, Yeah, you know? And now I'm like claustrophobic in the car. Like this is bad news. <laughs> Anyways, long story short, we get out to the salt flats and I'm sitting here, it belted in the car and I'm feeling good. I got tears in my eyes cause we're like ready uh, guys. We made it. We did it. Yeah. Thank you for all your hard work. And the guys push me off and I go down. And one of the things we have in our steering wheel, their steering wheel is very simple. It's nothing like the Formula One cars. <laughs> we have we have four buttons on our steering wheel. One button or two buttons for shifting, two buttons for parachutes, two okay. different parachutes. So on my left hand, I have second gear. On my right hand, I have third gear. And on my left hand, just inboard, I've got parachute one and parachute two. So the push truck pushes me off and I'm going down and life is good good and i am just like here we go and the rpms are coming up and i got a shift at six thousand rpms and i reach over and i reached a little too far and pop the parachute and i'm like you know Ugh. and all of a sudden you feel that parachute come out and i'm like oh you idiot and i can't believe so i shut the car off and pull it off and of course yeah. These guys are driving up thinking, oh, no. Something's we wrong. Had, we, yeah, something's wrong. We I, had knew, a f- I knew what happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they come up, and I'm out there just, I go, guys, I'm sorry. I go, I hit the parachute. So, yeah. and they're, you know, everybody's laughing. Okay, yeah. so is the car fine? Yeah, the car's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back in line. You yeah. know? Wow. <laughs> I think we still went fast enough to get, no, it was only like 100. Yeah, I don't even think we made it through the timing. Yeah, I don't think we did either. <laughs> it, was, it was embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, but at least I didn't have my shoes on the wrong feet. Right. <laughs> that happened. Yeah. That happened at two sixty five. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that was red four. We were, wow. we were way more experienced by that. Yeah. Yeah, by yeah. That time. yeah. I have I have these little booties that go on my on the bottom of my racing shoes, and the yeah. racing shoes are very soft. And so 
they kind of cover the toes and I evidently put my shoes on on the wrong feet. Oh wow. Not realizing that <laughs> Brandon takes my the little the little covers off as I step in the car so we don't track a bunch of salt inside. Sure. And I go down we run 265. I was like, "Oh, it's awesome." I get out and uh everything cars looking good and guys are getting ready to push us back and i look down at my feet and i'm like are you kidding me right now and my feet are going out uh, like this way. i'm like goodness gracious my mom's not even here to to dress me like this is so embarrassing but no. well uh you know when you think about it so you make it through the first run you shoot the shoot the yeah. second run you get your time and yeah. what was your time on the second run that was actually your we, first run 180 yeah we were we were licensing so so okay. Um, yeah, the first five runs that we made, uh, were all licensing passes. So we had to stay within a certain speed gotcha. uh, and for those and distance for those runs. Um, and he hit every single one of those speeds and distances just right. right. So, Neat. um, so we were able to move up to the next, uh, thing. And I think about run, uh, five was when we got, up around 300 i think we were 304 okay uh on on run five and then um yeah and then uh, six was right around the same it yeah. was middle of the day i think there was 308 or something like yeah, that. yeah it was it the car just wasn't pulling like we thought it yeah, was. yeah in the afternoon the afternoon runs uh, because of the weather out there um you know in the mornings weather everywhere sure. uh you know the 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 humidity is different the uh the temperature is different and, so the car reacts differently. And your motor responds differently. The fuel and air mixture in the in the motor mm -hmm. uh, responds differently. So um, in the morning, everything's nice and cool, and the the motor likes the morning. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the morning motor is a morning person, yeah. unlike us. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah. So so in the afternoon, you know, he was kind of pushing it for all he could, and it, the motor just kind of laid over, and and uh, he brought it back in. Uh, you know, yeah. we went 308 or something around there. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I think the next day was when we, uh, was it the next run after that that we did your dad's thing? Uh, yeah, tell he, a little bit was, about he that. Was on, he was on the 265 run, but then I think oh. the first shoot didn't come out. So we, we, we joked around and said that dad wanted to stay in the shoot until yeah. we made the first 300 mile an hour yeah. pass. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because you guys scattered your dad's ashes, which is a yeah a, a typical oh. honoring session yeah that has happened out there. Before. Yeah, you can see in the video. Uh, you can see there's a there's a little memorial sticker that the GoPro camera catches, and yeah, I mean the first time that I hit that shoot, and I, I you know it was just it was emotional. You sure, um, it, it's a it's a it's fun, but there's definitely a lot of stress that can go with it. I mean, it's not just you know, boys out there racing. Right. Um, there, there, you know, there is, there's a lot of stressful times. There's a lot of time away from our families. And so, um, but yeah, I think for my crew and my team and, um, it, it, we've had those moments that are just so gratifying. And yep. so racing mm -hmm. with my dad, finally getting to scatter ashes, overcoming the, the everything from building the engine to claustrophobic to stuff to, um, just everything, just the, the, you know, the friendships that we've had, uh, Brandon and I have known each other for so long. Here we are just a couple of young guys just wanting to go out and, yeah. and then we had this phenomenal year and it was just like, holy cow. I mean, we just got to <laughs> yeah. pinch ourselves. Yeah. It's, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. What do your firefighter buddies say about this? <laughs> Uh, well, I always joke around with him, but I think John coined the phrase. He's, he, he goes, yeah, you got to be the world's fastest fireman. So, <laughs> we're, yeah, we'll, we'll be going to a fire call. My chief wouldn't like this, but she'd be like, I think you can go a little faster. No, <laughs> not, not really. I'm kidding. Um, no, wow. I, I, yeah, we got a, we got so much support from everybody. And yeah. again, it trickles all the way down to our families. You know, you know, Brandon's married with kids. I'm married with kids. And so, um, you know, it goes all the way back to the support of our wives and our children, just yep. letting us go and do this because it's not just the week of August, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of time, time that goes into yeah. that. Well, folks, uh, it's hard to believe we're down to the, the last minute uh, of the show today. We've had with us, uh, Frank Silva, Jr. Uh, whose father, Frank Silva senior set the first record with the car. Yeah. You've now set the second record. Uh, who knows where it goes from here? Brandon Carter, the crew chief for, uh, uh, got salt racing uh it's been an amazing conversation and to think of all of the things you guys have done and uh just a 
a couple of ordinary guys got together and you put together an extraordinary accomplishment. Mm. Hey, um, yeah. amazing what God does with us when, uh, we use the talents that he gives us. I agree. Yeah. You know, pretty amazing. Well, thank you for having us. Yeah, yes, what a delight you. to have you yeah, here. We just got to get you out to the salt flats. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got the rest of Brandon's family yeah, out I'll, there. I got to get Larry out there next. I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to stay on the terra firma, not moving. Uh, listen, folks, we're really glad you've joined us at Powell to the People, where civility is always in style. Uh, remember, you can catch us Saturdays at 4, Sundays at 6. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time.